matter is comic book culture was something that was built and created through the lens of white male fantasy um mm-hmm. and since that point things have evolved and yeah, a lot absolutely. of people a lot of a lot of people who fell into the world of comics were not just white males living the fantasy they were you know people of different ethnic backgrounds they were people that were different gender or sexual orientations and those people yep. grew up with comics and now they are the writers um yep. so that is essentially just allowing us to re- review comic book stories and movies under done under different walks of life and different nuances because life is full of nuance into it she hulk um how do y'all feel about she hulk um and i know this could go two ways how we feel about the show as a whole or how do we feel about the show as in the uh meg the stallion cameo and the reactions that we've gotten which we'll talk about both of those um yeah. lady gunner have you watched she hulk at all yet yet i haven't seen the movie no yet Not oh yet. it's it's actually a show um oh the tv show yeah um, and while, I don't know, it, it greatly benefits from watching, um, like most of the MCU stuff, uh, you would get more out of it. But like, if you're slightly familiar with like who the characters are, are within like, just like comic books in general, like Abomination and, um, and you know, Bruce Banner slash the Hulk, and like so long as you know like basic things about marvel it's it's still worth a watch um but it's it's a it's a comedy show overall uh but it's a comedy show that kind of pushes forward some narrative threads within the mcu um not necessarily a must watch but it is a fun watch nonetheless would you agree with that i I would yeah I would, yeah, for sure. I'm about to say, I've seen like the trailers and stuff, and it looked funny. Yeah, I'm just like, I'm until we say Nico Robin, I just been, I just been binging One Piece. I was like, you know how long they've been trying to save Nico, and then they did the flashback for everybody, they did the flashback for Chopper, how they met Luffy. See, see, that's what I'm talking about. We need flashbacks. that. We need that One Piece Kai. Man, a bunch of flashbacks. Right. Just got past the flashback. caught up by now. <laughs> man, man. The best thing like, about One Piece about Kai, Tony, they can Tony like Chappie. redo the art style a little bit. Hey, <laughs> Greg. You know they're not gonna do that. Yeah, I know. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, like so like all in all though, <clears throat> what what are kind of some of your thoughts as far as the uh She Hulk show goes, Pat? Man, um I, I actually really like it. It it's for me, putting it kind of in the same vein as, uh, like, Loki slash Moon Knight ish, um, just just kind of kind of giving me that same kind of vibe where you know she's kind of already this superhero, you know we don't have right. to go through necessarily um, her origin, but we are like kind of doing some flashbacks here and there. I love the fourth wall break yeah. that she's doing. Uh, reminded me a lot of, of Deadpool, and I cannot wait to see Deadpool three once they get it up and running. So yeah, yeah, that, that's that's wonderful. Um, yeah. Like one thing I do want to mention about those uh, fourth wall breaks, it's it's kind of crazy because it seems like every fourth wall break is written so well. Like I know a lot of people mm-hmm. are trying to give the show flat, but they're written so well that usually the fourth wall breaks are almost addressing what you are thinking as right. you are thinking it. Like, you right. know, the first episode when you see her and it's like, you know, she's talking to her friend and they're stepping out of the office. You're like, oh, okay. So the first thing you say is, all right, well, this seems pretty normal. So I guess we're going to have some type of origin story cool yep. and then she literally turns around and she's like hey yeah we're not gonna waste time with the origin story here's a quick flashback yeah, right you know, <laughs> like which which i think is really clever and i don't know if they just do that by addressing the obvious of what someone would think or what but whatever it is like it works so yeah, yeah. i agree I, I like those a lot 
Yeah, I'm, I'm interested. Um, it seems like we're easing more and more into the action. Um, so I'm interested to see what, what they're going to be having her doing. Um, I don't know that much about She-Hulk because I'm not all that well-versed in Marvel. I mean, I know a lot of main characters. I know exactly who she is, but yeah. I don't know like who she fights or who her what her villain or her rogues gallery looks like or anything like that. So it's all going to be new for me as I watch the show. Yeah, and I'm, and I'm kind of the same on uh, She-Hulk as well. Um, but of course, we do want to at least take a moment as well to kind of talk about the moment that everyone is talking about. Some people are excited, some people are angry. Um, but She Hulk um, and Megan the Stallion twerking together. Amen. You know, <laughs> and I, I just want to say something quickly because everyone, it seems like there's a, a very, very similar crowd of people that are getting upset about this. Um, and I'm not going to really specify. We'll just refer to these people as a, a group of soulless men uh, in most cases. But we saw in Captain, we saw really in Infinity War and uh, Endgame, multiple references and jokes about Captain America's ass. We've, seen, we've seen Hulk's ass. We've seen, yep. um, I think we've seen Thor's ass a couple different times. Yep, we just uh, saw his in yeah. uh, Lord, Love and Thunder. Yeah, we so, yeah. over-sexualized Scarlett Johansson uh, in oh ways God, that, that, would be, that would be pleasurable for the same demographic of people that I'm addressing here and now. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've even explored, you know, Tony Stark's and womanizing uh, on, you know, on what Disney might not be ballsy enough to kind of put today in one of their mainline <clears throat> Marvel movies. So, like, even even when you look at what was that Winter Soldier and Captain America or whatever it was yep. called, uh, in that movie, I mean, in that show, everyone went crazy when Zemo was in the club doing his little dance, like, and it was a meme and people loved it and they laughed and Zemo became a favorite after being one of the most hated characters in the MCU in that moment. Right. What's the difference between She Hulk twerking with Megan Thee Stallion? Like, None. what is the difference? Is quote unquote ghetto. Yeah, I mean that's that's it because because she danced with Megan the Stallion. It's an issue, and I I've not confirmed this, but I've seen people saying that they have they've essentially ran Megan the Stallion off of Twitter for the week or some junk like that. I heard. Yeah, I saw that too. I saw Aww. that too, which was crazy. And that's I I think that um like abuse like that is just ridiculous. Yeah, like I understand you don't like something, and you you have the right to say that you don't like something, but to lash out and say or to harass somebody is just asinine. It's stupid. yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's it's a bit much. Like Lady Gunner, like I I know you said you haven't watched the show, but you did mention earlier that you've seen the clip. Like, do you think this is a clip at all that should incite any type of uh, outrage? No, I think I think it's funny. I think they just mad because it's Meg Thee Stallion and she's a rapper. Because people, people, a lot of people feel like Meg Thee Stallion is like too hyped up and too like glorified, and people say she the baddest this, baddest that. I really feel like it shouldn't matter. If she a rapper, she's a regular person. If she likes Marvel, she loves anime. Why does it matter if she want to twerk with a giant green lady? Like, yeah. you need to get mad at the producer. Why are you mad at her? He asked her. To me, I mean, right. she could have asked to be in there, but I'm pretty sure he asked her to be in there. Oh, you know, she got that bag. Oh, yeah, yeah absolutely. You know, she got that bag. Yeah. The fact that everybody just clipped that whole thing out of a TV show, like, yeah, like, I just, yeah. I just think that the outrage is so unnecessary. Um, because I don't know, like, it's becoming more common in this day and age. Especially because, and I and I and I don't mean to like politicize any of this, but there are a lot of people, predominantly people that are would be considered to be right wing, who will you know throw these kind of things in your face and then look the other way when it's like convenient for them. Um, and this same group of people usually find it very hard, um, which I believe kind of leads into a lot of like their political and personal views, but they find it very hard to relate to other cultures and other walks of life. Um, because even I've seen a lot of people that were upset about the line where, um, 
where she's talking to Bruce Banner and she has the comment about, well, you know, hey, I'm a woman. You know, if I get angry at the wrong person, you know, I could end up dead, you know, which is true. Like, how many times have we heard stories about a woman who did not want to take someone's number and ended up like, you know, hurt and murdered or or even is what they mad about most yeah. most hero characters are men so now you got women making a giant big clip and you got a, a woman superhero yeah like it's yeah. just it's just a big country a lot of people aren't country. ready for these types of conversations that uh i think disney is having uh in their shows and disney for the last few years in my opinion has been I don't know, not woke, but they they've been conscious of, of you know, like other walks of life, and, yeah, and you know what I mean, and, and what's happening in society, and 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 what's coming out in society, you know what I mean, especially when it comes to the LGBTQ and all the other letter uh, community, like that, they're they're there, you know? yeah, and I mean it is of what's happening in that in that world, so they're trying to bring that same consciousness. I think into their shows and other aspects and people just aren't ready for that conversation. Yeah. And I agree. I mean, it's like, and I mean, who are we to say whether they're doing it from an honest point of view or if they're doing it financially for financial purposes, right. like we don't know. Right. Uh, but right. what we can say is like, we've seen them take chances um, because uh, Miss Marvel was not great, but I thought that the cultural re- relevance that I would assume that would hold for those people um was was dope you know and you can yeah. say the same thing about shang chi and the way that that played out and how it looked Agreed. into their culture as well and even like the moment from uh captain america and winter soldier or falcon falcon and the winter soldier where uh sam first uh you know takes on the shield and has the new armor from wakanda <laughs> and he kind of yeah, has that speech. moment with the news where he's like hey uh-huh. yeah there are things going on um, yeah. I think that it's kind of cool, and I'm not sure how much of this is accounted to them giving voices to writers from those communities, um, or if this is a team of writers who maybe sits around and talk to these people. But it seems really interesting to see that that these shows are feeding into a lot of different cultures, and and obviously we can't speak for every culture, but in a way to where from the things that I hear and the things that I see, they seem to be touching on these cultures in a way that is actually authentic to some degree. Um, so yeah, I, I agree. I think, I think it's pretty dope. And I think that a lot of that has to do with some of the flack that she Hulk is getting is because people are finding it difficult to relate to a green woman who is not a giant green, angry beast of a man. Um, I also I think it's it's changed. Like everybody know She Hulk and yeah. it's Marvel, but everybody used to like men being the mainstream of everything, like Spider Man. Sure. I don't know how many if I don't know how many Spider Man movies I've seen. They did remakes, they did new people. So then we have women come on the screen and it's like big, but it's not even just women. I think it's just like the change. So like I was having a conversation with a guy and. This was when like rumors yeah. was coming around that's gonna make Michael B. Jordan Superman. He was like, Why do you gotta make a black Superman? Why do you gotta change this? I don't talk to him no more, but I was just like, Why does it matter? First of all, there is a black Superman. Second of yeah. all, why does it matter if Superman's black or not? Well, it's right. just because I, I, I don't relate to I don't relate to a white man on screen with a, a comb over. Like, I still watch Superman. And an escort. So watch Batman. Like, <laughs> right. I, I'm not a billionaire <laughs> playboy guy who beats up bad yeah, guys at night. Yeah, you know, like, I don't relate to that. I can't fly. I can't yeah. shrink and grow big. Like, yeah, I still also, watch it because it's fun. That, I think to that like, that point, Lady Gunner is um, it's a big green woman, and she's not only a big green woman, but she's in a position of power. Right? And she's she extremely intelligent, up, and she's not being over sexualized either, mm-hmm. right? You know what I mean? She's not always in a bathing suit. She's actually in command for a majority of her show. Um, same thing with Miss Marvel. Same thing with um, Black Widow, even though they they oversexualized her. At least in the, in the beginning, beginning of the yeah. Avengers. Yeah, but I mean, when she finally made it to her own movie, she was she was boss hog. So yeah, I, I they just they're just not ready to see these the and and come to the realization that 
you know, changes. yeah, the, 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 the old status quo that our grandparents and, and great grandparents and even parents are probably used to is yeah. not the status quo. Let, let me, let me go ahead. I'm, I'm just going to go ahead and just say it outright. Um, that comic book culture and i and i don't mean this in a derogatory way but the facts of the matter is comic book culture was something that was built and created through the lens of white male fantasy um Mm -hmm. and since that point things have evolved and a lot of people a lot of a lot of people who fell into the world of comics were not just white males living the fantasy they were you know people of different ethnic backgrounds there were people that were different gender sexual orientations and those people grew up with comics and now they are the writers um so that is essentially just allowing us to review comic book stories and movies under done under different walks of life and different nuances because life is full of nuance um so yeah i think that those people should like get over themselves and understand that it's okay that you do not relate to a particular story because not every story is something that you should have to relate to i mean you know what that would be extremely boring if we ex- if we knew how to what to expect from every story because we related to it on a personal level like no show me things that i probably wouldn't see before in in a movie yeah.